This is a CBS News special report. The return of Space Shuttle 2. Here is Dan Rather. Good afternoon, fellow citizens of our space-faring nation. The spaceship Columbia, lamed by a dead fuel cell, but still safely under control, now is in her last orbit, headed home to Earth. Within 20 minutes or so, Mission Control will tell astronauts Joe Engel and Dick Truly whether the weather permits them to land at Edwards Air Force Base, California, that's the preferred landing site, or whether they must continue on to an alternative, such as the White Sands, New Mexico. Even with their foreshortened flight, Engel and Truly have accomplished most of the major tests to sign their mission, including separating that Canadian arm and making a series of scientific observations of the Earth. The basic re-entry plan calls for Engel and Truly to flip the Columbia over, uh, tail somewhere over the Indian Ocean, and after doing that, uh, the whole idea is to fire their engines and slow the 17,345 mile hour speed of the Columbia. That's what I was trying to find was that speed is something over 17,000 miles an hour. They will lose contact with mission control for about 17 minutes because of the ionization gases before regaining contact on their way toward the sun-hardened desert lake landing strip at Edwards Air Force Base. Walter Cronkite is at Edwards and we go to him now for an update. Well, Dan, down here at, uh, out here at Edwards, depending on where you are, I suppose, when you start, but uh, out here on the west coast, some 75 miles uh, east of Los Angeles on the dry bed of the Mojave Desert, which is Edwards Air Force Base. The problem has been weather for the last 24 hours, uh, concern about cloud cover. Uh, they want to have a look from the spacecraft uh, at their landing, obviously, before coming in. Even if they were on instruments, they'd like to know what they're doing. You know, that's the big story of this spacecraft. They only get one shot at it. It has no power, of course, once it comes out of orbit. It's a glide all the way in, 75 tons of airplane to land uh, without power. Uh, it's not been done uh, before except uh, once on Columbia, and this will be the second shot uh, for astronauts and pilots to get a plane down under those conditions. They don't have a chance once they have to look at the runway to power up again and go around again. It's uh, that one shot only, and that's what makes this so dramatic, the moments we're waiting for now. Well, as a result, they want to be able to look through those clouds and be able to see the runway, of course, before coming in. The uh, optimum uh, would be, of course, perfectly clear uh, weather, no clouds at all. The constraint, according to NASA's book, is 50% cloud cover they could still come in on. It looks like right now we're in about as good shape as we've been lately with, I would guess, uh, probably about 50%, wouldn't you? Leo Krupp, Leo's with us. He's a test pilot, you know, who works with us. He comes out of Rockwell Aviation. Uh, they build this big beast. Uh, wouldn't you say it's about to five tenths now? <coughs> oh, yes, Walter. I think the weather's fine. There's no constraint on getting in. They should be able to see the ground from 40, 50,000 feet as they come on in. The only problem we might have is this wind. It's blowing about uh, 15 knots and uh, up at 30,000 feet. It's out of the west at 90 knots. So it's going to give Joe a little trouble flying his ground pattern around the, the, the hack, around the landing circle and making the runway. He's going to have to do that manually. As a matter of fact, they just decided a little while ago that they would definitely go ahead and make a crosswind landing here at Edwards. Now, they had a, a, a several, of course, test objectives always in every one of these flights, many test objectives, as a matter of fact. But two of the uh, very important ones on this flight were to either test an automatic landing system from about 25,000 feet on down uh, or to test a crosswind landing, one or the other. They might have been able to do both if the wind had cooperated. Turns out the, they can only test the auto landing on one of the runways. That's runway called 23, meaning it heads 230 degrees or southwest. Uh, but that's the only runway that has the automatic landing equipment here at Edwards at the moment. If the wind had been across that runway, they could have tried the automatic landing system and the other thing they want to try, which is a fully a, a crosswind landing. 
However, the wind's not cooperating. It's almost right down that 230-degree runway or runway 23. It's right out of the southwest. So they've got their choice now. Either they could try the auto landing and come right into the wind, or they can, uh, or they can uh, come a, make a crosswind landing and come in on runway 15 or a southeast runway heading 150 degrees. They've opted for the crosswind landing as of this moment. Although uh, there are a lot of experts out here at uh, the Dryden uh, uh, Space Center at Edwards Air Force Base who think that they're, uh, they're going for a pretty heavy crosswind for the first attempt at 15 miles an hour, perhaps 12, it might get down that far. Uh, it's quite a lot of crosswind. And, uh, as Leo Krupp, uh, we were saying just a little while ago, that means that the pilot is going to have a pretty good uh, lot of work to do getting in. He's going to have to avoid, uh, you were mentioning, Leo, uh, blowing a tire, as a matter of fact. Well, there's always a possibility of blowing a tire on any landing, a little more so on a crosswind landing, but uh, Joe Engel is one of the top pilots. He's probably... Uh, Astronauts are all good pilots, but Joe has had some really good flight experience, and if anyone can get it in, I'm sure he's going to be able to do it. It's probably his major problem is going to be flying around the hack, uh, around the landing approach with these high winds at altitude. The wind is really tremendous up there, 90 knots at 30,000 feet. And, and of course he doesn't have any power as we keep saying it's all uh, it, it's all a glide and uh, that makes it very difficult for him he's got all the automatic equipment all the ground help but it's going to be a pilot's problem getting that plane in this morning they have a go for the deorbit burn which uh, will come uh, in about another uh, oh it's about another 10 minutes from now uh, 15 minutes something like that and right now we go back to Dan rather Dan Thank you very much, Walter. We'll be coming back out there, of course, often and soon as we go through the afternoon and the landing of the Space Shuttle 2. John Young, who landed the shuttle's first flight, uh, has flown over the Dry Lake landing strip to check the weather and to be sure that all the landmarks uh, are, are visible to guide uh, the shuttle into the landing. Joe Engel, as you mentioned, will fly this manually for the landing. They're expecting uh, large crowds out there at Edwards Air Force Base, perhaps as many as uh, 100,000 had arrived by dawn today. Our CBS News coverage of the coming home of Space Shuttle 2 will continue after these messages. <laughs>